where the man cannot effectively have sex with you, don't wait after six months of the happening of the event. That is the marital property. The example is maybe he comes home every time he's drunk okay. and he beats you up, he disgraces you before people and you have had attempts at getting him to stop that kind of behavior. This marriage has broken down beyond what reconciliation. So Michael, what are the legal implications of jointly owning property with your spouse? Joint ownership here presumes that it would be shared on the basis of 50 50 percent okay once there is the need to do any distribution okay so let's assume that we acquired a, a, a piece of land or a parcel of land and then we registered it in my name and the name of my wife or even at that time maybe she was my girlfriend we hadn't married but we wanted to marry and after that, all the building that came up, it was me. And then later she says she, she wants to divorce me for whatever reason. Um, what happens? Okay. So to the extent that it is joint property, the law sees it as what you intending to share that 50-50%. Wow. In our prior conversation, we had indicated that there are circumstances that the law is looking at your contributions. Okay. But here, the law is going to look at what your intent had been. So any joint property, the presumption is that it will be shared 50-50. Wow. So I think this is the reason why a lot of men, some, some men, not a lot of men, because I don't have the statistics, some men, when it comes to building, they don't even tell their family members. Then they'll be building somewhere far away remotely. And sometimes, unfortunately, they die. Nobody knows that there's a property. What, what, what's your personal thought on this? Yeah, so I think that uh, it is a good thing to let people know about any property you are acquiring. And for that matter, your wife and your children. Okay. The reason being that uh, once you're dead and gone, they are the ones who have to face the world. They are the ones who face their blood, sometimes if you're of your family. Yeah. And so the best way to get them uh, some comfort when you die is to ensure that anything you are developing, at least they are aware of what you are developing. Now, when you are married under our laws, if you even go and hide to develop the property and it is in your name when you die the constitution grants that your spouse should not be deprived of wow. a right to your property okay very very important that's why you had to do it so there was zero contribution from the person. yes okay. yes even though there is zero contribution the the constitution does not allow that okay so what then it means is that your wife would have some right to your property. So you cannot deprive the spouse oh. of that property. So speaking of depriving your spouse of property, can the partner decide that I want this house, I want this house, I want this house? Because recently there was a case, very popular case that I don't want to mention. Um, the wife took the matter to court to divorce this gentleman who works in government and listed all the properties that this gentleman has acquired and says, I want this beachfront apartment at Takrade. I want the 32 bedroom house at East Ligon, et cetera. What was the position of the law on that? So, so again, the law looks at all the circumstances. Okay. It is not the case that the law wants to punish either the husband or the wife. What the law is seeking is to look at the welfare first of any issues of the marriage and when we talk about issues that is the children okay. so that is the first thing the court is going to look at once their welfare is taken care of then there will be no problems at all where usually the court will allow the wife to select is when the man is dead okay. without a will okay in which case you can select where there is difficulty selecting, the court can do that on behalf of the wife or the husband. Okay. So you, you can't just go to the lawyer and say, I know my partner has 10 properties yes. across the country, one yes. in every region. And I like the ones in the southern sector. He should take the ones in the northern sector. Yes. So you can, you can ask for those reliefs okay. when you are requesting for 
the divorce. Okay. However, the court would have to look at the merits of it and then decide which one goes to you, which one goes to the children, and which one is retained by okay. your spouse. Interesting. So talking about um, divorce, what are the conditions under which somebody can say they want a divorce and the court will accept and grant them what they are asking for? Okay. So, so marriage is the bedrock of society. A society where people are not married would eventually uh, uh, get depleted because there will be no children who would have to take over from the aged or those who are dying. So every society takes marriage very seriously. And it is the same vein that when you are asking for divorce, there has to be what? A very cogent reason why the courts should divorce the two of you. Okay. And so in our laws, before any marriage can be what set aside or before any divorce can be granted, you have to prove that that marriage has broken beyond reconciliation. Okay. So there has to be evidence that there have been attempts at reconciling, okay. but those attempts have failed wow. and that the two parties cannot be reasonably seen to be living together as both man and wife. There has to be evidence that yes. there's been attempts at reconciling. Yes. Even if the other partner cheated in today's yes. terms. Yes. Yes. So, so, so everything can be forgiven depending, hey. on, <laughs> <laughs> uh, depending, depending on personalities. So there is a man who would have evidence that his wife has cheated or his wife has uh, confessed to him and he's willing to accept her. The same way there's a woman whose husband has what cheated and she's willing to forgive for the marriage to go ahead. Okay. But in those circumstances, if you are not willing to forgive or it goes against your principles and for that matter you want to seek a divorce, you have to do that quickly. You don't wait after six months of the happening of the event before you come to seek divorce. Really? Yes, because within that six months, if the two of you are consulting together, then it is deemed that you have forgiven hey. the party. <laughs> and so if you want to use that as a basis to say that your marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation because your partner has cheated on you and you have full evidence to that, then you should do that within six months of its what happening. It's an eye-opening something because I thought once you have evidence and maybe you've separated, you are living in different places and you can't bear it any longer. It was two years ago, you come, you want a divorce. Okay. It, yeah. Okay, so he cheated two years ago and immediately you got wind of it. You left the yes. matrimonial home and you are separated. So that is different. Okay. But where you are still in the matrimonial home okay. and after six months, you cannot use that as the basis. You can use other issues that are happening as a basis to say that, okay, this marriage has broken down beyond what? reconciliation. An example is maybe he comes home every time he's drunk okay. and he beats you up, he disgraces you before people and you have had attempts at getting him to stop that kind of behavior and it continues. Okay. So for that is a basis for you to go to court. Wow. Other than that, if you ask the spouse you are able to tolerate or you are forgiving or you are always forgiving those uh, uh, behaviors, then that is up to you. Wow. So um, the first one is cheating or adultery. The second one is drunkenness, disgracing you, beating you. Are there any other reasons why? Yeah, so, so where the man can, can, cannot effectively have sex with you, it is also a basis for you going to court to ask for divorce. I thought it was for better for worse. So yes. I had, God forbid, <laughs> someone has an accident and can no longer perform. It's yes. not his fault. Yes, so, so usually these are circumstances that should have been prevailing even before the marriage. Okay. 
where in the marriage that happens it is a different issue okay. altogether okay. another example of this is for instance if she has had he or she has had some mental illness and prior to the marriage you as the spouse you were not made aware of it or you don't know and that comes up during the marriage you can go for divorce wow however if he or she has had no issue or case regarding mental illness and that happens after you have married you can use that as a basis okay um, please hold that thought. Yes. When it comes to mental illness, the definition has become very wide. I don't know what the law views mental illness as. But nowadays, some even say things like um, depression, um, bipolar symptoms and things seem to fall into the category of mental illness. What is the position of the law on that? So that somebody doesn't say, because I'm acting this way, and I fit into a certain description of mental illness, they are going to divorce me and take half of yes. my property. Yes, so, so it is not in uh, the mouth of each of the spouses to say that, okay, my wife or my husband has a mental illness. First, there has to be medical evidence okay. to show that, yes, there is some mental illness. Now, that mental illness should be grave okay. such that Nobody would expect you, or reasonably, nobody would be expecting the two of you to be living together. Okay. For instance, if the person has depression to the extent that when, uh, the, uh, when there are issues or when this mental illness starts, he or she becomes violent mm. and can ruin your life or can cause severe bodily harm or injury to you, nobody will be expecting you to live with that person. Okay. So at the end of the day, we need the medical evidence before the courts can take a decision. But oh. as I said, if these were before the marriage and you were not aware of it and you got to know during uh, the marriage itself, those are grounds that you can go to court to ask for divorce. The other ground is consanguinity where the two of you share family ties. Okay. We don't, it's, it's usually a taboo, even in most of uh, what ethnic settings. Okay. So that one too, you can divorce. Where well, of course you have been separated for over two years and you are not living as husband and wife. Surely you can also ask the courts for divorce. And where there has been an abandonment, either the man or the woman has not been living with the spouse for five years, you can also uh, uh, go to court for a uh, divorce. Michael, please, so let's hold on before some people jump at this one and say, my husband traveled to Europe for the past five years. He's sending me money, etc. Yeah. but he hasn't come home. We've not lived as husband and wife. Can I go and divorce him and take property no so where there's an agreement between the two parties that he's going for studies he's going for greener pastures and he communicates regularly with you he sends you money to take care of the children you cannot use that as a okay. basis okay. we are looking at the circumstances where there is no agreement between the two of you he or she has left for five years no communication nothing the, the, the law will not allow you to suffer the mental anguish forever. And so there has to be a point when that must be brought to an end. Okay. Yes. All right.